Okay, hello, I'm Piotr, I work at NVIDIA, and today I want to show you uh, how we manage high-performance workloads uh, using KubeVirt. And okay, so the agenda will be, I will first show you our current state of uh, KubeVirt, what uh, uh, changes in our infrastructure made us uh, to uh, do some open source contributions. Then I would like to talk uh, about how NUMA systems and Kubernetes work together. Then I will uh, tell you what upstream contribution we did uh, in the last uh, half a year <clears throat> to make it better. And then uh, what we are planning to do in the uh, in, in this year, I guess. Okay, so first uh, it's an overview how we use Qvirt at NVIDIA in our team. This is the part of the our core platform uh, that is uh, supporting workloads like GeForce Now. Maybe you heard about GeForce Now. It's like a game streaming service. And this service requires predictable low latency. And we both use Windows and Linux uh, VMs. Uh, and in our case, the uh, hardware can be pretty uh, complicated, but the life cycle of VMs uh, is not very. Uh, complicated. Uh, the lifetime of those VMs is pretty short, like eight hours, and and that's all. So, uh, what is the current state right now of the Qvirt uh, in our team? We are still on Qvirt uh, uh, 0.50, and we're right now we are in the process of upgrading to the newest version, 0.59, and we allow running virtual machine only uh, from resources coming from single NUMA domain. I will tell what NUMA is in the next slide. And right now we are using Kubernetes Topology Manager that is configured with single NUMA node policy. Uh, and we also use Topware Scheduler. Topware Scheduler is uh, like one of the plugins from the all out of three Kubernetes plugins project to minimize admission errors. I will tell what it is uh, in a couple of slides. So what is NUMA? So, when, we, when I want to explain what NUMA is, first I will start from the history. So at the beginning, there was only UMA systems. UMA stands for Uniform Memory Access Systems. And basically, when you are adding more and more CPUs, uh, then your uh, memory bus were getting bigger and bigger because you only had one memory on the uh, motherboard. And the access to the memory from each CPU, where the latency was becoming bigger and bigger. So in order to overcome uh, this issue with adding more CPUs and uh, memory to be as low as, as possible, the NUMA systems were invented. And basically, uh, NUMA, system, NUMA stands for non-uniform memory access. And the memory were split into parts. And uh, each CPU has its own local memory. Maybe not each CPU, but there can be like groups of CPUs. But this is simplified simplified uh, uh, picture. And in this case, the memory is split into parts and uh, there are domains, uh, NUMA domains, and each domain has its own memory. And this memory uh, can be accessed uh, from CPUs within the same domain uh, much quicker than the memory from remote domains. And we call it local access or remote access. And that's why we only allow running uh, resources from single NUMA domain, because uh, the latency is much lower in this case. And uh, I, want, I also want to talk uh, about the characterization of our workloads. Uh, we are heavily using virtual machine instance presets. I know that they are uh, deprecated. So right now we are also planning the migration to instant types and preferences. And we maintain always exact CPU memory ratio. Uh, and uh, I will repeat myself, uh, we only allow resources from single NUMAN uh, node. So in here, I want to show you how we are uh, using uh, VM presets and this exact CPU to memory ratio. So for example, for the uh, we will have three presets. So you have full preset, which means that the VM will take all resources from single NUMA domain. Uh, if a NUMA domain has 28 gigabytes of memory and 60 CPUs, it will just take all the resources from it. We also have a second preset, which we call half, and it will uh, have and it will get 
14 gigabytes of memory and eight CPUs. And we also have a quarter preset, which will uh, be seven gigabytes of memory and four CPUs. So in this picture, you can see that we can fit four uh, VMs with quarter preset on a, uh, on a single NUMA domain. So uh, we uh, to maintain low predictable latency, we are using CPU pinning for our VMs, but we are not using CPU manager. Uh, yeah, it may sound uh, confusing, but we wrote our own CPU device plugin. Uh, why we didn't, uh, why we are not using CPU manager? Uh, we have found some limitation that is uh, discarding it for our use case. So at first it's only CPU manager is only working for guaranteed pods and it also maintains a shared pool. It means that you can have uh, containers, pods with exclusive cores and uh, any other uh, containers that are not uh, using exclusive cores will be moved to the shared pool. And because of this shared pool, we can not bind all the CPUs on the uh, host uh, for VMs and uh, we don't want this. We, will, we just want to assign all CPUs for our VMs. And because we believe that our uh, platform daemon sets or services, their footprint should be minimal. So uh, we just allow them to float across all the uh, cores. And uh, what there are also other features that our CPU device plugin has. Uh, first, the most important that it allow all available CPUs, it's just advertising them and those system processes will run on all the CPUs. Uh, the ability to allocate all logical CPUs, hyper threads from physical cores. Uh, when we wrote this plugin, there was no uh, concept of uh, CPU manager policy options. Right now, it can also be achieved via CPU manager with full CP, PCPUs only. And we have also modified QVirt uh, by a bit so you can support setting vCPUs in the VMs and pin them to the specific PCPUs. And of course, there is support for all QS classes with our uh, CPU device plugin. And this is just a picture to show you that we can assign the uh, two cores to VM1 and from each core we'll assign all logical CPUs uh, to this VM. For VM2, it will get other cores and our system processes other pods will just float across all the cores in the system. And we are also using huge pages. And as of now, we are using one gigabyte huge pages. And we don't need memory manager because we only uh, allow resources from single NUMA domain. And we always control the CPU memory ratio. So we know that our VM won't ask for resources from more than one NUMA node. Uh, and right now, we're also exploring switching to two megabyte huge pages because, as you will see on the couple next slide, we plan to. Uh, switch to the hardware that will be uh, that and will allow VMs to uh, use resources from more than one NUMA domain. And then we are also exploring interleaving memory between NUMA domains. And then using one gigabyte uh, pages uh, is not that beneficial as using two megabytes huge pages. So where we are heading? So uh, right now we have plans of start uh, of using machines with four NUMA domains. And we also uh, allow creating pods or VMs that will be consuming resources from more than one NUMA domain. And we are uh, we have some tests that shows that interleaving memory over multiple NUMA domains can be beneficial for applications that doesn't have a native uh, NUMA uh, awareness. And our main goal is to minimize performance impact of consuming resources from multiple NUMA domains. So what is the support of NUMA in Kubernetes? This is like the first part, let's go uh, layer below the QVirt. So there is a notion of a topology manager in Kubernetes since Kubernetes 1.18. And it works like this, that is asking all the hint providers uh, when it wants to assign the resources to a, a container or pod, it asks all the hint uh, providers for hints. Hints means that uh, available uh, resources from all NUMA domains, and it will give you all the possible combination that can satisfy given resource requirements. Hint providers are CPU manager, memory manager, or device plugins. And then topology manager is just picking the best hint based on a policy. We have four policies in uh, topology manager. There is a best effort, uh, restricted single NUMA domain, and none. So single NUMA, single NUMA node is pretty simple. It will just uh, 
uh, reject the pod if it cannot uh, give you resources from single nomad domain. None means just don't run topology manager. Best effort means that uh, give me resources from least amount of nomad domains and restricted means uh, give me, uh, try to give me uh, the least amount of NUMA domains. Uh, but if there is a possible scenario that those resources can be satisfied from only one NUMA domain, then reject it. So basically, uh, if, for example, there is already other pods consuming resources. So, and in Kubernetes, there are some uh, other projects that helps you achieve that. There's also top over scheduler, I just call it. It's uh, to be exact, is just a node resource topology match scheduler plugin, and it just it's filtering out the nodes based on current uh, resource utilization, and is uh, filtering out the nodes that cannot satisfy requirements from single nomad domain uh, to minimize admission errors. Because topology manager is running uh, inside kubelet, so it's on the node, it's after scheduling, so there can be cases that uh, theoretically you can have uh, you can. Uh, satisfy resources from single normal domain, but there are other pods running and it will just reject it. So it can uh, make your scheduling time much bigger. And there is also not featured discovery, which is uh, advertising node resource topology objects uh, that shows the current usage uh, of your resources across normal domains. Uh, yeah. And Kubernetes before uh, version 1.26 uh, doesn't account for NUMA distance when calculating the schemes. And now I'll tell you what NUMA distance is. So this is more complicated uh, picture, similar to what I shown like on the third slide. And basically in our case, when we have four NUMA domains, and you can see that we have two sockets on our machines, each socket consists of two NUMA domains. And the uh, access uh, from, for example, CPU zero to each memory uh, the latency uh, is different. So you can see the local access, the distance is 10, and 10 means that it's local access. And then the accessing C, uh, C, the memory from CPU 2, uh, some NUMA domain 2, uh, the distance is 20. 20 means that it's uh, two times, the latency is two times bigger than from the local access. And you can see, you can also see that accessing memory from NUMA domain one for uh, from NUMA domain uh, zero is 12. And 12 means that it's only 1.2 times bigger. So in our case, when we want to assign resources for a VM or pod that will consume resources from two NUMA domains, we would like to, uh, that this pod will land on either NUMA domain zero and NUMA domain one, or NUMA domain two or NUMA domain three, because this is optimal allocation from distance perspective. And uh, before Kubernetes 1.26, the uh, topology manager didn't account for NUMA distance. So uh, first thing we did for the upstream contribution <laughs> was to implement uh, a topology manager policy options. Right now you can pass policy options to topology manager that will change its internal behavior for uh, picking best hints. And we have also implemented the first option for topology manager called prefer closest NUMA nodes. And it will just do what I show you on, uh, on this slide. Uh, when picking the best allocation for uh, NUMA domains, it will also take into account the, uh, the distance and it will just calculate the average distance between all the NUMA domains and it will pick the lowest average distance. Uh, the second part is that uh, we also had to modify the scheduling uh, piece of Kubernetes because there can be a non, there can be a scheduling decisions that are not optimal from distance perspective. And to show you, because every time when I talk about scheduling, I need some pictures. Uh, I will show you example scenario uh, when uh, without proper scheduling, how the kubelet can uh, think that it picked the best uh, uh, NUMA domains from distance perspective, but there can be other nodes in the cluster that can satisfy it uh, in even better way. So let's take this scenario. We are uh, creating first pod uh, that we only uh, take resources from single NUMA domain, second pod, third no, uh, pod, and fourth pod. You can see all the uh, resource allocation are optimal from distance perspective because the pot is only consuming resources from single NUMA domain. And then the second pot and third pot are deleted, removed. And then we are assigning a pot that will 
consume resources from two NUMA domains. And now you can see that Kubelet is picking the available NUMA domains and the distance for it is optimal because there are no other choices. But when you look at the cluster, there can be other nodes that can satisfy those requirements for either, from either node, domain zero and domain one or domain two and domain three. So in order to mitigate that, we need to also modify a Kubernetes scheduler. In order to do it, the first thing we need to have is node resource topology uh, custom resources, and they are responsible uh, for showing you the uh, current utilization of resources in each NUMA domains on your node. And basically it's just a custom resource a definition or custom resource when you create in the cluster, it's being updated by node, resource, node feature discovery and it's used by a Kubernetes scheduler plugin, the top of our scheduler to pick the, uh, to pick the proper node or filter out nodes that cannot satisfy requirements. And we have also worked with node resource topology community to add missing topology manager policies because it was first only uh, designed to work with single NUMA node policy. We also separated topology manager policies from scope and make it possible to advertise topology manager policy options. So the first we the, the implemented topology manager policy options in Kubernetes, and then we tried to propagate it to other projects. Uh, node feature discovery, I have also talked about it on the previous slides is advertising those uh, NRT node resource topology objects. We also had to work with the community to add missing topology manager policies, uh, update uh, NFD to consume the newest version of NRT's V1 Alpha 2, and also added reactive updates for, uh, so we didn't add it, we just reviewed the code, it was uh, upstream by uh, Red Hat, but it's a pretty cool feature I wanted to add it here because uh, previously, uh, NRTs were only updated in the inter, but based on some interval, for example, three seconds, two seconds. And right now, uh, NFD is uh, picking up that the new pod was created on the node and then is updating NRTs. So it can also reduce a stale data. And scheduler plugins, this was the most difficult part. So basically, first thing we did, we have uh, added a new scoring strategy for top of our scheduler, which is called less NUMA node, less, uh, less NUMA node, yes. And basically it's favoring nodes that can satisfy your pod resource requirements from the less amount of NUMA nodes. So that's the first part. So let's imagine in the cluster, we have two nodes and the first node can satisfy your pod requirements from single NUMA domain and second one from two NUMA domains. So the scoring plugin will favor the first node over second one. We have also created a cap, so Kubernetes handle proposal to consider also uh, zone distance in this uh, list NUMA, less, NUMA no, less NUMA node scoring strategy. And right now uh, the PR is uh, in review, it's in progress, and we hope to get it merged like uh, this probably next month. So uh, we'll have this. And uh, future optimization, I'm just looking at time, I still have time. So. Uh, we have started looking also at L3 cache partitioning. Uh, so L3 cache is shared between multiple cores. So in, like, I want to say that L3 is shared in between cores on the socket, but it's not always true nowadays, but yeah, let's consider it like this. And cache allocation technology allow splitting L3 cache into parts and separating them from each other. And then you can assign those, uh, uh, you can define uh, allocation classes that will assign those L3 cache parts into either processes like given uh, pits, or you can also specify it for specific CPUs. And yeah, I want to show you a picture for that. So let's consider that we have L3 cache that is uh, shared between four cores. And we can have, for example, without cache partitioning, we have two VMs. First VM is using two cores and second VM is also using two cores. But without the isolation, we can think that, for example, second VM is much more noisy. So it will occupy more L3 cache and your first VM will start from this uh, perspective. So it's a classic noisy neighbor problem. Yeah. And with cache partitioning, you are just assigning to the first VM the half of L3 cache and to the second VM other half of the L3 cache and they cannot uh, use more or less. This 
come with one downside that will reduce your memory bandwidth, but it will vastly improve uh, or reduce the noisy neighbor problem. And that's all. Uh, I don't know, uh, there are any questions? Let me stop sharing. I don't see any questions in Q&A, but... I can see one question in the general chat. Uh, no, there is no discussion about CPU manager with regard to that, because this is like, it was a main idea behind CPU manager to have this shared pool and exclusive pool. And there is no such behavior. There are a lot of other proposal to, for example, have a method of replacing CPU manager at Kubernetes. Uh, one cap is uh, in review right now. I forgot its title, but uh, they just want to uh, give you an interface or like a pluggable uh, pluggable, uh, the kubelet will support like plugins for resources and CPU manager, memon merger, topology manager will become like the uh, first plugins of that. And then you can just change those plugins. So probably with this proposal, we would be able to implement uh, our policies without going to a, a separate device plugin. I can send you link later. Uh, I know it's driven by Intel folks. Uh, are there any other questions? Okay, checking out the chat and QA, I'm not seeing anything else. So if anyone has anything else on their mind related or loosely related, love to see the interaction. Thanks for the presentation too, by the way. No problem. My pleasure. We've got a round of applause from Ryan. I think uh, he had to applaud me. All right, then. A lot of whoosh. Yeah, I, I can feel that sometimes. Um, actually, if, uh, if something seemed kind of beyond your grasp, but you are able to ask anything about it, Alexander, um, now's a great time. If any of that whoosh can be explained, we have the right person for the job right here. There we go. I got I are, the, are the Windows VMs more like desktop VMs? So yes, we are streaming games from it, probably. So yeah. Yeah, so uh, there can be a lot of whoosh. It was for me at the beginning too, but I am working on it like for the past year. So it can be, it, it can be pretty easy after some time. Okay, so. Great. Well, thank you for the presentation and for sharing it with everyone. Um, it looks like we will have, um, 